The situation at the southern border in Texas is getting very interesting because yesterday the Texas Attorney General refused to grant federal agents access to the area in question where they've been putting up razor wire to stop the invasion, which is in a state park. So that is state property. And this after the Supreme Court ruled that the government has supposedly <laughs> the right to take down the barbed wire fences that the state of Texas has been putting up. And so now the Texas Attorney General, the lead lawyer of the state of Texas, is saying no. But states and even cities defying federal law is nothing new. In fact, Democrat mayors and governors have been doing this for many, many years by allowing sanctuary cities where they interfere with the lawful orders of the Border Patrol and the Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE to round up illegal aliens in their states and in their cities. And so now it appears that Texas is just giving the Democrats a taste of their own medicine. And now 25 different Republican governors have signed a letter supporting Texas in their quest to prevent an invasion of their state. But that's not good enough because Republicans always send off a strongly worded letter that does nothing. So if these governors actually mean business, they should start sending Texas rolls of razor wire to help out with the operation. And this may lead to a major game of whack-a-mole where the state of Texas may continue to just put up a barrier in order to protect their state from the invasion of millions and millions of illegal aliens, while the federal government then goes and tries to cut it down. And there've already been clips of Border Patrol agents cutting the razor wire in order to help the illegal aliens invade the country. But if the Biden administration orders the Department of Homeland Security to in mass start tearing down these barriers, these makeshift border fences, then those clips are gonna go mega viral. The Department of Homeland Security and the FBI have already warned Congress about the imminent danger because of the invasion over the border. Because God knows what kind of terrorists and organized criminals and cartel members are invading. And it's not just people from Mexico or Central America. This is a recent photo of Border Patrol welcoming the invaders. And as you can see... These are all uh, Asians, probably from China, probably Chinese government communist agents infiltrating to do who knows what, who knows when. But Old Joe does support a strong border for Ukraine. So, nations have a right to sovereignty and territorial integrity. They have the freedom to set their own course and choose with whom they will associate. And Joe Biden sounded like an American when he was running for president back in 2008, which I guess the cycle started in 2007 when he ultimately lost and then was picked as the VP by Barack Obama. But here he is back then. It makes sense that no great nation can be in a position where they can't control their borders. It matters how you control your borders, not just for immigration, but it matters for drugs, terror, a whole range of other things. So that's the first sort of truism. The second truism is that, that this nation is such that people in the country should have the first opportunity to be able to have jobs that pay well and have jobs that are decent, and that after that, the second crack goes to what we may need from other parts of the world or other or, or any other input. That was then and this is now. As president, there's several more things because things have changed. I would, in fact, make sure that there is we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. I'm sorry, but the only people who have legitimate asylum claims are those who worked in a communist regime and then became a whistleblower to expose the corruption and then had to flee. Otherwise, they'd be imprisoned or killed, which amounts to just a small handful of people, not millions and millions every single year. Tucker Carlson's former producer and lead writer Greg Ree wrote this on Twitter yesterday, saying, when I worked at a big law firm in New York, Shepard Mullen, 
The partners provided pro bono legal services to a Venezuelan migrant who was clearly lying to get asylum. She claimed their phone was being monitored by the authorities because she heard static, etc. She knew exactly what to say because she had been coached. She then came to this country, never paid rent, even though she had Gucci bags. The firm also represented her in housing court, too, so that she could get endless extensions. This is what most asylum claims are. The goal is to just come up with a story and get these people into the country where they can disappear and never show up to court. The biggest law firms in the world support this. And the millions and millions of them that come here and that break into our country and then just claim they're seeking asylum, they are literally given court dates over 10 years into the future. So they just come here, claim asylum, and then they're allowed to stay with some sort of a green card or some temporary, you know, a status, asylum status, until their court date, which literally isn't for a decade. The official fake number from like six years ago was that there were 11 million of them here, but studies even from Yale University and MIT found that there are at least double that. And so that was back in 2018. So even if just a million came in every year since then, which we know that there were at least 2 million that came in in Joe Biden's first year in office in 2021. So it is now about 30 million, probably at least 30 million illegal aliens. This country has 330 million people in it. So literally almost 10% of the people in this country now are illegal invaders. And what did Joe Biden do on his very first day in office back in January of 2021? He announced his plan to legalize them all. And I also want to remind folks who are watching that on the first day of this president's administration, he introduced a comprehensive immigration plan because he understood and knew, right, as many of us do, that immigration system had been broken for decades and we needed to actually deal with it in a legislative way. Let me translate that Orwellian speak. A comprehensive immigration plan means to give them amnesty and a pathway to citizenship, which is the equivalent of if a bunch of teenagers sneak in through the exit into a movie theater, instead of the theater kicking them out when they get noticed, then it would be like them giving them free popcorn and candy, which is exactly what the Democrat plan is. Remember all the Democrat candidates who were running for president in 2020 when they were asked this question? Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Healthcare coverage, Obamacare for illegal aliens. Every single one of them raised their hands. And now it's here. Since California leads the nation in stupidity, and unfortunately, as California goes, so goes the nation. This from just last month, California becomes the first state to offer health insurance to all undocumented immigrants. Some people might be saying, well, does that mean that they can pay for health insurance even though they're undocumented? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? Back in 2015, undocumented children were able to join Medi-Cal, that's free government paid health insurance, under a bill signed by then Governor Jerry Brown. In 2019, Gavin Newsom signed into law an expansion of full scope Medi-Cal access for young adults aged 19 through 25, regardless of citizenship or immigration status, okay? This is like the free health care for those who can't afford health insurance, for those who are on welfare, and now illegal aliens. The final expansion, which went into effect on January 1st, made approximately 700,000 undocumented residents, <laughs> they're calling them, they're the undocumented residents, the future Democrats, and of course, 700,000 is probably half of the actual number. So one and a half million illegal aliens aged 26 to 49 now eligible for full coverage. In California, we believe everyone deserves access to quality, affordable health care coverage, regardless of income or immigration status, says Newsom. And don't worry, Californians, it's only going to cost us six and a half billion dollars a year to pay for them. But it wasn't that long ago that Democrats sounded very different about illegal immigration. They actually sounded like Americans. You know, we all agree on the need to better secure the border and to punish employers who choose to hire illegal immigrants. 
Uh, you know, we are a generous and welcoming people here in the United States, but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law, uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Chuck Schumer, the most powerful Democrat senator in the country, sounded even better. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. When we use phrases like undocumented workers, we convey a message to the American people that their government is not serious about combating illegal immigration, which the American people overwhelmingly oppose. Yes, we do. And unfortunately, there is a reason that all of this is happening that I detail in my new book, The War on Conservatives, which you should order in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. There's a whole chapter on immigration that covers a lot of things you're not allowed to talk about on the big tech platforms and so much more. And if you enjoy watching my videos, you're really going to love reading the book. So head on over to Amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.